A short history of nearly everything. Book written by Bill Bryson. But this is my summary. This book is about nearly everything, so we're going to jump around a little bit. The book mainly covers history of science, the Big Bang, physics, chemistry, genetics, biology, and geology. Part 1. Lost in the Cosmos. So let's get started with atoms. Atoms make up everything. They have protons, neutrons, electrons. Protons are positive, neutrons are neutral, and electrons are negative. But where did it all start? Because even atoms have to come from somewhere, right? Yep, the universe started with a bang, and it was big. It was the start of our universe as we know it. Once the universe started, there was no stopping it. It just kept going and going, and is still expanding today. Many scientists believe that the universe will just keep expanding forever, like a vast ocean that seems to never end. Some scientists also believe that the Big Bang we had was not the first one, and that there were others, but they failed. However, the Big Bang is only a theory, and it's one of many. Now let's talk about our solar system. Our solar system has nine planets, but I guess we don't count Pluto anymore, so it's eight. But let's take a minute just to talk about Pluto. Pluto may not be a planet anymore, but it's one of the more interesting parts of our solar system. Actually, Pluto's moon is the biggest moon in the solar system relative to the size of its respected planet, Pluto. However, we can't see Pluto or its moon very well from Earth, so we have to send probes, like Voyager, for example. It sped past Jupiter, Saturn, Mars, all the planets, and eventually got to Pluto, and then we could see it. But Pluto is just one planet in the vastness of space. There are tons, billions of other planets. That means that there are other planets out there just like Earth, that could possibly sustain life. But the possibility of us running into another alien or civilization on another planet is very unlikely due to the vast number of planets. I know we all like to learn about aliens, but let's move on to Reverend Evans' universe. Reverend Robert Evans liked to look at the stars. He liked looking deep into the past and finding dying stars. Which isn't that hard, considering you can just look up into the sky. Any star you see is one that's already died, because it takes so long for its light to reach Earth. If you think about it, the stars hold the greatest history of all. They have the oldest and the most important history, the start of where we came from. Evans discovered an IA supernova. A supernova occurs when a star dies. The star explodes and leaves a trail of bright colors. You can see these supernovas through your telescope. However, like I said before, these supernovas happened years and years and years ago. It's just now that that light is getting to Earth because it takes so long. Now that we've learned a little bit about the stars, let's come back to our solar system and learn a little bit about what's close to us, like the moon, and where it came from. 4.5 billion years ago, an object the size of Mars crashed into Earth, blowing out enough material to form the moon. I mean, yes, the moon formed over time and came to be the sphere that we see today. But how did something crash into Earth? When Earth was still in its early ages, it probably was already beginning to form its atmosphere, which mostly consisted probably of carbon dioxide, nitrogen, methane, and sulfur, which is not anything you would think would contain life, but at that time, there was no life on Earth yet. Earth then spent the next five million years getting pelted by meteorites, comets, and other galactic debris which then, in turn, gave Earth, water, and other chemicals, which eventually helped to form life. Well, that's the end of part one. You can watch part two and the rest of my videos by going to my YouTube channel by typing Lauren Harris Science, and it's the one with California Republic. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.